like to call the June 26th meeting of the Congress Select Board to order. The time is 6.30. This meeting is being recorded by Area 58 Community Access Media Channel 9 and will be posted by Area 58 on YouTube as soon as possible. There are openings on several committees. Please refer to the front page of our website for a listing and application. Would you all please stand for the pleasure of the meeting? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Prayer. Almighty God, humbly we pray your blessing as we concern our life with the opportunity to serve our community. Enhance us with your spirit of dignity and selflessness. May we become instruments of support and understanding as we seek to bring an environment of trust and purpose among all who provide the many services that make us all that we can become. Help us achieve the goals of our commitment in this office that is now our responsibility. And especially we lift up our prayers, lift, we lift our prayers for all the citizens of our community that we have been allowed to serve, that they may discover the fullness and joy of life that we all seek. And keep those serving in our armed forces and our first responders in our hearts and thoughts. Amen. Okay, first item on the agenda, as always, citizens' participation. Are there any citizens that would come up, like to come up and make a statement? Please state your name and address. <coughs> Cooney Lee Shea, 148 Plymouth Street in Carver. Um, water is our most precious resource. We know this. So many towns around us are struggling with it. Um, you can't live where there's no water, you can't work where there's no water, you can't build where there's no water. Um, and I, as in the situation as I understand it right now is there's no water. There's no water for the people who need it. There's no water to develop businesses in North Carver. Um, the DEP has stated that no new commercial business can be added on to the Millboro line. Middleborough is serving us out of the grace of the state and the grace of Middleborough under emergency order. Um, we're on the hook for this plant until the year 2049, and please correct me if I'm wrong. So this town will be paying for it. This town made the decision years ago to provide water for the citizens and the development of this town. Um, in the past few years, more and more citizens have found that contamination in their water has affected their health, their safety, their livelihoods, and their homes. Um, I'm here to support the applicants from North Carver who have skin in the game, who are here to um, pick up a failed system. So it's not going to be an easy task. It's not going to be a quick task. Uh, by any luck, it'll take a a year if we're tremendously lucky, but um, it is unlikely that if we're not, as a town, up and running this, that it won't be a priority for anybody else or anything else. We can't transfer it. All the permits are in our name. Uh, we can't develop North Carver without this, and uh, I think the, the residents of Carver are, are, are heavily dependent on and looking forward to the development and commercial development that can take place in North Carver. It's one of the few places in Carver that um, any sort of uh, development on long-term scale can take place, and it can't do that without water. So uh, I'm here to support um, the North Carver residents that have applied. They seem well-qualified, intelligent, and hardworking people. Um, we've already suffered through many, many years of poor management, indecision, and neglect on the system. And, and it's time for people with, uh, with skin in the game to uh, fight for, for themselves, for the town, and for the future of this town and the people that might end up under contaminated water or struggling with water issues. That's all I can say. Thank you for your time Thank tonight. You. Thank you. Anyone else that come up to the um, table and make, make any statement? 
Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Um, so, let me just call I, I do want the board to know um, when we posted the meeting uh, Monday afternoon, I, I actually stepped out of the office. I had a doctor's appointment. Um, I did see that the Conservation Commission had a meeting at 7 o'clock upstairs in room 1. Um, I told Shelby to change the meeting room, those locations are down here. When I got back to the office, I did have an email from the Conservation Commission uh, administration person telling me that they would move their meeting. I, I told Shelby to keep it here. I just want the board to know they did reach out to us to, to move their meeting. They were going to um, you know, accommodate us, so I thought that was a good thing. Um, and then the other thing I want to say is, I know the last meeting we had, there were a couple of applicants uh, who were not in attendance. Uh, we're going to change our procedures for how we invite people uh, when they're being appointed uh, to make sure they know that there's a request from the board that they do attend. Uh, I don't know if we're going to go with a form letter or just a standard email, but kind of all the same language going to everybody, again, inviting them to the meeting. And I want to apologize to anybody who, uh, who didn't um, understand that their, their uh, presence was requested by the board. That's all Thank you, Chairman. Again. Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes, if Mr. I could have a comment on what, um, what Mr. Cannon just said. I think whatever we send out, whether it's a form letter or an email or however we send it, it ought to, it ought to, ought to state you know, that, that they're invited to the meeting and they'll have an opportunity, clear state they'll have an opportunity to address the board. And I think it ought, to, it ought to state what time they're going to be on the agenda with some type of general statement saying, hey, all agenda times are approximate and please be there early because we could, we could get to you earlier, somewhere yeah. to, that, to that effect. Just a suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And again, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for taking time out of their lives, their busy schedules, to come here for uh, this second meeting uh, to all these applicants. Um, I guess looking at, I'll go by the same order that's on the agenda, but I think uh, Mary Dorm notified us that she couldn't make it tonight. So we'll go with um, Douglas Fix. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, hey. I guess would you like to um, tell us uh, why you want to be on this commission? Give us some uh, uh, on this uh, on the North Carolina Water District uh, uh, and a little bit about your background. I right, well, I'll start with my background. I've been I've worked for Hanson for eleven and a half years. My first, and then from there I went to Duxbury. I've been mean, at Duxbury. Worked for the Water Department for like twenty three and a half years now. And I'm a foreman. I came in as a treatment operator. I got my treatment water license. I got my D3. I got my treatment license. Um, so I've been around water since since I was 20 years old in, in all aspects. And I just think my knowledge and work, you know, my, knowing about the water industry and everything, that brings some help to the town of and which way they want to go. And it's going to be a hard process, and we'll see what see what happens. Okay. Are there any questions from the board, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Downs, just the same question I asked everybody at the yeah. last last meeting. If you were appointed, um, you would have to run for reelect, run for election next year. Would you plan? Would your plan be to run for election next year? Yeah. Well. Okay. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Me. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bell. Yeah. Hi, I have a couple of questions. Um, you were on the board before, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you didn't run for election right. when you were supposed to to keep it up, All right? So that's the first thing. When you were on the board, um, did you do site visits to the plant? Yeah, you did one. Went there one time. You went there one time. Yeah. Uh, do you know? Did you sign in the logbook when you went there? No. Did you know where the log books were? No. Like I say, it was just a quick stop by calling in and met, met the operator there and just kind of got a quick glance. And I was just kind of curious to see what that plant looks like compared to my plant. And when you looked at that plant, what did you think about it? Yeah. It's small. Small. Okay. What about the cleanliness of it? Uh, they were in the process of uh, working on it, so he you know, was in disarray. Okay. Um, you have plenty of experience, don't get me wrong here. Um, I'm looking at this from a non-water person, and 
I'm sure you saw my video and about this place and um, the pictures that are there and there's more of them um, how bad it is um, it doesn't happen in one day um, all these issues that are in that plant um, the outside uh, water retention area where the water drains into there um, how is that supposed to look uh, it's mowed and you know, but I mean, not, I'm not used to like the groundwater storage tanks. We have elevated tanks, so to me, it's I just saw it. And I was like, it's kind of not not good design. And did um, since you're in the industry, uh, did you look at the laws related to water commissioners or what our rules and regulations and what we are? What we can and can't do. Are you familiar with those? It's been a while. Like I said, I was on board of water commissions in Hanson for a couple, like three years or in Hanson, but and then I was back in uh, 2006, and then come back here. But you, I know you have a couple of interest for us, whatever. But yeah. okay. And um, what what years were you on as the member? Of the water district for 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 here. Um, I think it was there for just one year and maybe a year and a half ago. So 2022, 23. Yeah, roughly around that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. If you looked in a logbook and you saw something that said 6:23:22, and then you switch to the next page, it says 6:223. Um, so that's a year with no documentation to that plan. What would be your uh, estimate of what should be done? Uh, you're supposed to log in, and records are huge, and there should be <coughs> paper trail. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Any, anybody else have any questions? I have a question. Sure. <clears throat> so um, you had just finished your term on the North Cabo, Cabo Water District, right, yeah. before this election, and then you decided not to pull papers for that. Yeah. And I'm going to ask everybody why you didn't want to pull papers for the election. Um, I was swamped at work. We lost four plant operators, so I was working seven days a week. Uh, I was only one running the water plant, so I, I just had too much on my plate. Okay. And I worked a year and a half, seven days, because we were socially handed, it killed me. And just trying to, it was so well, I couldn't do both. And your work schedule's freed up now? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, um, that's my second question, why I decided to, and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna be open, I'm gonna ask everybody that. Yeah. Why all of a sudden now, um, Yep, we okay. almost, uh, we'll be, actually as a drive first, we'll be, we'll be to a full crew. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And like I say, this, this, this treatment I need to be addressed. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, got, uh, just a few questions. Um, uh, what was your involvement with the small water systems and uh, what was your opinion of their ability to maintain the plant? Uh, I really didn't have much contact with them, whatever. I mean, I just went there one time and got the hand on it. I mean, they communicated very well, but I think they did the best of what they could do. Yeah, and what was, were the commissioners involved in making sure that all proper documentation got filed on certain dates? And that I guess that would mean going to small water systems and saying, hey, you need to meet these deadlines. You, if the small water systems do it on their own. I, I, I from what I understood, I believe that well, small water systems was in control of the uh, water plant and it was supposed to do all the paperwork. Then they're the one with the licenses and everything. And so I figured we were paying them for the yeah. plant. And when you talk about the current rule, is it in Duxbury? Yeah. And, and uh, it's an unfair question, but when you're mm -hmm. comparing, I mean, I mean, how many people does Duxbury? Uh, there's the plant service. 
Ooh, ballpark. Uh, ballpark. High rate now about six six thousand. So six thousand. So uh, it, are the two plants like apples and oranges, or are there similarities? Or no. okay. Like they say we have uh, ten wells, two tanks. Um, our smallest well puts out uh, two hundred twenty gallons a minute, and our biggest well puts out close to four hundred. And like I say, we have ten sites. Okay, and we just pumped. 2.4 million gallons of water yesterday. And, and when you were on the North Carver Water District, um, I don't know if you remember, 20, uh, 22, 23 year old, um, yeah. what were some of the bigger challenges that you had? Uh, getting the thing up and running. And just, it's, <coughs> it needs a it need, it need tank for starters. And is, it, I don't think it's a really good design. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Sure, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, let me get this right, Mr. Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for the record, name and address. Alan Maynard, 148A. Three, so we have some new members there, Mr. Mr. Maynard, would you rather, would you like to give a little summary of what you presented last time? Not sure I can speak with the eloquence I used last time, but <laughs> 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 I wasn't taking notes. Um, I was really shocked and surprised to find out that there was nobody other than the chairman serving on the North Carver Water Board um, at town meeting. Um, I've been very bad with myself and haven't been paying as close attention as I thought that I might want to into town affairs. So I said, oh gee, oh gee, oh gee. There's something I should do. I live in North Carver. I live in the affected area. I'm waiting for water hookup. Um, supposed to have water delivered yesterday. Didn't happen, didn't happen today. So I've been running out buying a bottle of water. Um, no intention of selling my house right now. It's a good thing because I couldn't. This directly affects me. Um, I don't have any great personal knowledge of water systems. I came by a knowledge of the history of this whole thing um, rather unexpectedly. I bought a piece of property in North Carver in 2001 and wound up being the proud owner of the land on which the North Carver water treatment station sits. Um, I am no longer the owner of that property. I've since sold that part of it, but the property transfer came with a gigantic stack of papers, which being a geek, I sat down and read during cold winter nights and read all about vinyl chloride and the ancient and historical North Carver land film, the reason for the water district and the reason for the, for the pump, pump little enough for the pollution per se, but the treatment station, Middleborough water and kind of educated myself on that. Um, it became a real problem. We, I tested the water when I built my house. That was a condition of buying the property. I had the test it clear, uh, tested fine. We'll buy it. We'll iron it, but that's that's good for you. Um, a few years ago, I found out we we're supposed to be getting tested, but we weren't. And I found out that we were going to get tested, and apparently, on one test of however many, there was a trace of vinyl chloride. Um, so the not sure it was not live, but we've been on long water since. Um, <coughs> I feel like that I'm not a quick lens kind of person. I'm an IT guy, I troubleshoot things. I, I, I look at something and I say, how do you troubleshoot it? What's, what's the logical way to go about things? Um, <coughs> you know, what's not like a failed system? You look at the failed system, you say, what, what, how do you fix it? What are, the, what, what are the parts that are failing? What are the processes that are failing? What can you jettison? What do you actually ha absolutely have to do this week, this month, this year? What do you budget for? Uh, that sort of thing. So basically getting an idea of the whole project would be the first thing I'd probably want to do um, because it is a project. It's not an ongoing concern. It's a project. And that's how I would look at it. Um, I say my personal interest is pretty much, you know, doing the skin in the game and being a member of a, of a citizen of this town. Um, and, um, you know, just, I, I guess feel an obligation. My, my old man used to always say, if you want something done, you didn't do it yourself. There's no one else going to do it for you. So, um, that's, that's kind of the bottom line with me. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm there to, show up and pick up a shovel or show up and pick up the phone and 
you know, um, I think the strength I would add to that would be basically the, the logic of troubleshooting, the integrity, and just following through on things and getting, you know, I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and get somebody's face. Um, so, but I'm not, uh, I don't want trouble. <laughs> so, that's uh, no, no, grand, no grand political theme here. No, uh, no, no campaign slogan or anything, just there's public service announcement at the beginning of this um, meeting. Then there's openings and vacancies on town boards, and I've been hearing that for a couple of years, so that's why I put my name on. Any questions? Great. Well, thank you. Any questions from the board? Sure. Just the same no. question, Mr. Maynard. I know I asked you this at the last meeting, so I'll just ask you again. If you are, if you are appointed, you plan on running for re-election, running for election? That would be my intention, yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I know. Okay. I asked him my question, but I'm, I'm happy with him. And, and I think you pretty much answered my question that at the town meeting you saw that there was some openings. That's why I decided to put you in. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I'm one of those people who does seem to get involved in things from time to time, but I don't go looking, running around saying, looking for a cause. It just stuff seems to find me. And I don't usually, I don't usually look for it. If, if I'm needed, I jump in and try and help. And next thing you know, you're <laughs> up to your eyeballs. So. Well, this will be a big... Uh, Adventure for you. Yeah, it's really will be. And you had mentioned you're you're on the you're not on the North Carolina water. I, I I'm waiting right to be. I'm waiting okay. to be. Yeah. Okay. In fact, the, the fire hydrant they put in um, in my in my drive in my driveway is a great landmark because my driveway is one of those dirt roads that runs back to the bogs and no one can ever find my house. And I think, hey, this beautiful red hydrant right down in my driveway. I found it yesterday. No problem. So. <laughs> and, and it's a reminder that the water's coming. The water's coming. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, uh, Eric Mueller. Please state your name and address. Eric Mueller, come Franklin Road. Would you like to give us kind of your background? Or? Yeah, so uh, 1990 out of high school, entered the wastewater industry. Uh, proceeded to stay with that through 2000, then expanded into the water industry, um, providing services for both. Uh, ran that right up and through about 2005, 2006. Then I moved over into an operations leadership role. Um, I continue to work in both industries and I deal with the five big operators pretty much located in all of Massachusetts, the Woodard and Currents, the Small Water, uh, White Water, Weston and Sampson, um, Aaron. Uh, deal with them on a probably a monthly level on the operations end. Uh, my supervisors deal with them in the field itself. Um, oversee a book of business about 39 million a year. Manager PL, uh, 73 employees. So um, that business aspect and then the experience with the operators and what they're keyed up to do um, led me over to North Cabo Water for my prior stint. Thank you. Yep. Any questions from the board? Yeah, well. Same one. Um, if, if you were appointed, do you plan on running for next year? I do. Yes. Okay. And I guess I, I, I may as well ask you the question that's sort of hanging out there. So you were recently on the board. It was. You stepped down. And right. now here we are. Yes. So. so I began on the commission, I think it was August of 22, first week of September 22, somewhere in that time frame. Um, I think it was just after that the, the filters went offline. Um, so we weren't doing too much at that point. They were up for a period of time. Um, dug in deep with the commissioner at the time, uh, Mike Palmieri. A lot to learn about the plant. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, uh, a lot of parts that have a um, fiscal impact on the town of Carver. And a lot of policies and procedures that kind of moved along. We try to move it a little bit at a time. It's a lot to overcome. Um, there were prior boards. Um, when the plant went online, I think it was about 2012, roughly, um, it was the goal to pay off the debt and hit on the head. Right now it's $5.6 million through, I think, 2046 to pay for what's there. That's not without any modifications. Um, looking at it in the business aspect, we focused on getting a budget together, an operating maintenance budget, um, established funds at that time to get in the uh, facade 
maintaining and then prepare for an incident like it happened where we use opera funds this time. Um, it is upside down, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was shocking to see the town is paying for the, the note now, I think it's $246,000 a year. Um, the plant generated about $240,000 a year in revenue. Uh, then the cost to run the plant with the operators, the maintenance, um, I think we were negative $132,000 a year at the end. So um, the current customer base doesn't pay for, but that's the payments going out the door. Um, and it can't be expanded on to really su sustain any growth and then income to continue to operate. So an investment, we're kind of in an impasse. That's where um, the chairman was leaving. I thought it was a good point to also depart. That would leave no commission and it would roll up to the town. And at that point, we could figure out what's going to be in the best interest of the town and then the folks that are on the North Cabo water. Uh, we were on Middleborough water. They offered to sustain what's there existing and then a possibility for the plant to be utilized for the development in North Carver um, with the monies that can probably be appropriated from investors or however they want to run it up north. So, a lot of challenges. Thank you. Yep. Okay. okay. Any questions? Um, so when you went to the plant, how many times did you go to that plant? From my recollection, from my photos, uh, five times. Five times? Yes. So from 623.22 to 6223, did you go during that time? Uh, September 22, I got on the board. I wasn't there okay. prior to that. Um, I was there until April this prior year. Okay. I was up there just after the plant went down, met with the operators on site, um, walked around the plant. We did realize, I mean, everything was duct tape and bubble gum, basically. Mm -hmm. um, parts, faulty parts. It was, it was tough. Um, everything was kind of a part. They were taking the membranes apart at the time. Um, you probably saw that on the, everything that was going on in town. Um, we followed up when the membranes were installed. They had a subcontractor come in. I was there the day the, the delivery came in with the truck. I didn't stay for the whole delivery. Um, the operators were there. Uh, returned, I want to say it was like three months later when they had, or two months later when they had all the parts in, they were getting the system online. Uh, and then I think I returned one other time after that when they were, had the plant up and they fired it up. And when you went there, did you see the mice droppings and the bug droppings and everything around the plant? No, um, I don't recall any, seeing anything. I, there was water leakage. Um, I saw the chemical room. It wasn't real bad. Um, I know we had an inspection performed I want to say it was July or August of last year from DEP. It was signed off on the plant, the condition, um, and then it went offline in December. I don't think the operators were really in there much after December of uh, last year. Which brings me to December. Is the last time they wrote something in the logbook was 12 one Possibly, yeah. So they have no documentation from 12 one to when they left in May, yeah, it should be in the meeting notes. Um, we were getting a water report from them, what they were doing, because with the plant offline, they weren't running the plant. Uh, they were doing other things with the, on the service line itself. Meters, um, backflows, testing of the water on the lines, because they had to still continue to do that, even with middle row line service on. So my question now comes to the plant out. Why weren't they given the funds to do the maintenance of the building by the water district. They weren't there. There's, there was no funds for it. We put a budget together. There was no budget, really. It was just covering the cost. I mean, we were going to the town for the money to get appropriated, and it was getting paid back to the town, whatever came in over the course of the period of the repairs uh, or the fiscal year. But there's no, there was no budget for operations and maintenance. You know, invest in the membranes for when they go again, eight to 10 years, plan on putting them out. I mean, we appropriated, I think it's $50,000 a year. It's like fifteen dollars to $20,000 over our first year spend. And that's only going from the first, I think that first year me and Mike were on there, what we could see at that point for repairs. My next question is, you guys made the decision to not do a generator company and gave it to small water systems. 
for the what for the generator backup generator there okay so how often did you guys make sure that it was being checked that was all part of the and you can check on this we weren't involved with the contract with small water and what their their operations were for that plant even though we're in the north Carolina water commission um, that was all taken care of from operations and maintenance of the town account we weren't involved in what their responsibility was at the plant um, did you look at the laws relating to water commissioners and what their yeah, yeah. guidelines are and what yeah. they're supposed to do? So I deal with a couple of commissioners now. Uh, they're basically, they're on the business side of things. They oversee operators that are responsible for the maintenance and taking care of the water system itself. Um, the, champ, the commissioners, they're responsible for the, oversee the, the business part of it. Approve funds, uh, make sure the reports come in, that what the operators are doing and, and performing for the town. Okay, they're actually in charge of everything. Their name is at the top of the food chain. So everything underneath them falls under them. Right. So it's their responsibility to ensure that everything is being done. We are the overseers of that plant and whoever is in that plant, working on that plant, doing <clears throat> stuff in that plant. And personally, I just think that um, it's time for, uh, it's time to move on and, and uh, I agree. It's not a, it, we're a volunteer boy. It, we need once a month. Um, I know Mike personally was putting in about 25 hours a week, talking with the operators, talking with the town, talking with DEP. It needs a full-time operator or somebody to be responsible for the plants in the town. I don't think the budget's there for it though. And, and then, um, just to tap on what you'd said earlier, so um, you and Mike both decided to resign uh, at the same time, okay, with the intent that no one would take that position and it would go back to the town. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? Um, just following up on uh, that last question, um, uh, you came up with this, you advised that that would happen, or? What's, yeah, once there's no commission, I mean, we're still on the number of water, we don't, we don't have a plant running. The responsibility would then fall back on the town, or the select yourselves, uh, to oversee, and then probably, I don't know what the next steps would be, but I assume it would be designated commission, whether it's amongst yourselves, uh, and then make a decision, because there's a lot of pieces in play. Are we gonna continue to put money into the plant? Are we gonna tie Stay on the Middleborough water? We're gonna work with the North Carver development for somebody that's coming in. I've heard talks, um, I read with a gentleman the other day that this discussion and there's interest up there um, with also taking on that plan as well. So there's a lot of different pieces, uh, but it needs involvement from multiple individuals from different boards within the town to make it work. And, and I'm remembering um, way back when the p &L that we used to get on the Carver Water District, I know there was a line item and I think it was no, no water consultants or something. It was the waste. It was the um, small water systems line. Yeah, I think uh, it was so around six thousand dollars for North so Carolina water. Yeah, so there was a budget in there for expenses. Um, I'm mistaken. I looked at it way back when. Thought that was something like if a valve went or something like that went, that that was part of that budget. Nope. So the six thousand dollars. Can you summarize what they actually did for the six thousand dollars? They had time and labor and testing in their filing of the reports. And and if there was a capital like. The membranes that got replaced. Okay, that was something that they recommended to to the board. Correct. Okay. Uh, that that happened just after I got on. I don't know if that was recommended prior to me coming on the board. When we looked into that, the recommendation from the manufacturer was at least every I think it's ten to twelve years they should be replaced. Okay. But it should be run at full capacity as well. That's a I think that plant's designed for a hundred thousand gallons a day. It should be running at you know 80 percent of that at least um it's only running i think at 40 45 percent which is worse uh, with the amount of manganese and iron in the system so. okay and i think when it first went live i think 2012 sounds about right um i think it was am i getting the name right mike Willem? i think he yes was, i've heard that name he was the actually an employee of the town i believe he was a town employee in the beginning and we tried doing that with regards to putting someone in charge that had skin in the game and 
right. I guess didn't work and then eventually small water systems came out. Yeah. Right. Um, sorry, uh, financial aspect of it, you were saying that I know the town for, since 2012 has been dumped 250 or 60 thousand dollars a year into that. And you're, even with that, you're saying the operational cost was a negative $136,000 ballpark. Is that yeah, like so a year? Going off of fiscal year last year, I think they generated $232,000 roughly, give or take. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Um, as income from the water users. Basically, it's a wash on what's paid for the loan. The operating costs, I think it's around $6,000 a month for small water. Um, the utilities were running around $1,600 a month for the propane. The electric was running anywhere between $1,800 and $3,200 per month. Um, and then any costs above and beyond what the operations company are doing, testing um, out, outside what is required. Um, that was an additional cost. So. And then okay. any repairs. Uh, we found a lot of stuff. I mean, me and Mike, right away, we didn't want, small water had a struggle prior to us, you know, do you want us to fix it? Yeah, do you need a second one to have in stock? Does it go? We asked the questions. Um, that's why we established a budget off our first year. I think we generated, it was about $32,000 above and beyond typical operation, it was repairs. So we budgeted $50,000 a year cover those, we know it's not gonna reoccur every year, but we wanted to start putting that money aside for the next round of membranes, you know, eight to 10 years. Got it. Thank you. Anything else? No. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So, so just to confirm that when you resign now, and the reason you wanna be back on this commission now? I'd like to see it through. I mean, it's at an impasse. Um, I assumed it would go to you guys and then a decision we made, but I mean, it's going to involve a lot more people. Um, we didn't get it. I mean, me and Mike sat by ourselves for, I think it was four or five months. There was no applicants. Mike was leaving. I said, well, <laughs> I'm out. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Next uh, applicant, Kim Shea. And for the break, at least that you know, members. Um, my name is Kim Shea. I live at 148 Clement Street. Um, for my background, um, I've been doing environment, health, and safety um, professional for the past 25 years, plus 25 years. I hold uh, an industrial um, wastewater uh, license through the New England um, Water Pollution Control Commission. Um, my job, part of my job, um, outside just the health and safety, is the environmental aspect. <clears throat> so I manage um, pretreatment systems for industrial wastewater. I manage the permits. That I manage all the testing. Um, ensure that we are in compliance with our local, state, and federal regulations. Um, so I'm pretty well versed in Mass DEP water um, regulations and EPA. Um, the health and safety aspect, um, obviously, when you're treating water, whether it's treatment for drinking water or discharge for treatment to turn it back into drinking water, um, there's chemicals involved. So the people that you have in the plant, they, you need to make sure that the, the environment is safe for them to work in, that they're handling hazardous chemicals, um, that they have the right equipment that they need to protect themselves. Um, I'm personally interested in this. I live in North Carver. Um, the fire hydrant that Mr. Maynard was speaking of also sits in my front yard. So it is this nice little, it's very nice, it's beautiful. Um, so you know, we've been fortunate that our well has not tested positive for anything, but you know, there is always that concern in the back of my head that yes, that we're eventually gonna have to maybe go on water. Um, I have a 500 foot well, I'm, pretty, I'm feeling confident that I'm gonna be okay. But, you know, my neighbors are affected. Um, it's a neighborhood that I live in. Um, and it's just something that's very important to me. And, you know, if we want to develop, do commercial development in this town, we're gonna to need the infrastructure to support it. Um, and that will include providing water especially to the urban renewal area. If they want to build, they're going to need water. And I think it's very important that 
we put everything forward that we can to get the system up and running in compliance with the DEP and able to support future growth like we want to do and is outlined in our master plan. Great, thank you. Any questions from members of the board? Same, same yes. question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, thank you. Oh, yes. <coughs> Mr. Bell. No, I was happy the last time. Okay. And that's the same question. Why now do you would you like to be on the commission? Um, mainly because I found out that um, two people had stepped down and that there was really nobody on the board. Bob was alone. Um, with everything that's been going on in our neighborhood with concerns with the water, um, I felt that um, with my background that I could maybe help and assist in, in achieving this goal of getting the system back up and running. Thank you. And anything else? No. Um, could you just a little bit of clarity here? I want to make sure I'm not reading this, uh, I'm assuming something. Um, you're a licensed industrial wastewater treatment plant operator. But then you talked about you seem to have some experience with clean water. I'm sorry, sir. Then it seems like you, you talked a little bit about um, experience with clean water systems. Clean I was just saying that the way you treat water, <clears throat> whether you're drawing it up or you're discharging back to um, a treatment plant, you use similar chemicals. The system, it's, the system results are not identical and the processes are a little different. Great, thank you. Any questions from the boards? No, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you everyone for um, coming and um, coming to the meeting tonight. I'll throw this up to the board. Do we have any? Uh, why don't we talk about maybe? Should we talk about questions or concerns, um, or we'll go right into motions? So, uh, first, before we go into that discussion, I want to thank all four and Miss Mary Dormer for stepping forward. Um, I know it's not easy to step forward in this type of stuff, and especially when there's open. So it takes a lot. And I, I appreciate that because um, Mr. Bellman needs some help over there. And, uh, and everybody's reached out for that, so I just want to thank everybody for that. It's easy to sit on the sidelines and not get involved, and appreciate that the five of you have stepped forward for that. And what's unique about just uh, of what you said, you know, it's a separate district, but is it really? You know, because when someone doesn't have clean water, they're not going to call just the North Carolina Water District. They're not going to call small water systems. The phone's going to come here as well so we can't turn around and say oh it's not us it's the North Carolina Water District you know so it's it's uh, everybody has a vested inter interest in it so again we appreciate y'all for coming all right having said that do we have a motion mr. chairman um, I'd just like to say as I said it last time um, thank you all for applying it's always difficult when you have more applicants than you have have positions um, when I was chairman and the North Carver Water District failed. The membranes failed and things happened. Um, this whole board um, joined with Mike Palmieri. Mike Palmieri was the only North Carver Water District commissioner at the time to try to help as best we could. And, and I continued to talk to Mr. Palmieri. We talked often, weekly, bi-weekly. We talked a lot. And one thing I learned from talking to Mike is how complicated an issue the North Carver Water District is. It's not a simple issue and it's not a simple plant. It's very complicated. And I just think that experience with water and with the North Carver Water District is a really important thing. So I'd like to make a motion to nominate Eric Mueller as the North Carver Water District Commissioner. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion, we have a second. Any other questions, issues, or concerns? Yes. Mr. Bell. Discussion. Um, so, as you heard from him today, he said that him and Mike plan to leave the system at the same time, um, leave the district at the same time. Um, that's my opinion. They alluded beforehand uh, of a meeting, which is an open meeting law complaint. If they two talked to each other beforehand and said, hey, we're going to see you later, we're both going to leave at the same time, and they both did. Um, Knowing that I jumped on the board, 
um, I would think they would want to stay and continue on. But then hearing more that there was actually a plan ahead of time that if they leave and no one else is on this board, it comes back to the board of selectmen. Okay, and the board of selectmen can appoint themselves as the water commissioners if you wanted to at that point. Um, knowing that and whatever behind the scenes stuff that was going on with Middleborough and everything else there um, that I don't know about. I have people that say this, that, and the other thing, but no matter what, I just look at it and say that um, um, with Eric Mueller, he bailed. When we needed somebody to be there, he bailed. And my fear is that um, if he is allowed to get on and uh, Mr. Fix gets back on, okay, that uh, there's no reason for me to say because I'll get overruled on everything. And I think that's the possibly the intent. Um, and if that is, shame. But it's to say, uh, I'm a no vote on uh, Mr. Mueller. I want new people on the board. Uh, we had two people that showed up the other day, um, actually three, that showed up the other day for the meeting that we had. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, Eric was on the board for a long period of time, only went there six times. I've been there, I can't tell you how many days already at that plant. Just me going through that plant, getting estimates from electricians, um, uh, two companies to come in to look at it. Um, the bugs issue, the mice, um, it's, just, it's just one after the other after the other. And these things should have been done beforehand. I mean, when I walked in that, knowing that lights were out, outlets were exposed, okay? Uh, outlets weren't even working and they had core extension cords and this wasn't just a little thing. I mean, anybody can see these things that aren't right in a water plant. You shouldn't have things strong on the floor, all right? Um, and then the uh, outside um, pit area, I mean, that has 10, 12 foot trees growing in it. That's just poor maintenance. Okay, not poor oversight. And Eric didn't do the oversight he was supposed to as a water commissioner. Because as I said before, you're at the top here. Everything below you, you're in charge of. It doesn't matter if you give it to somebody else to do, all right? And the generator, it's in lockout mode now because small water systems, they said, hey, you guys hire somebody for it, all right? Well, they did. They hired a company to come in. They came in and did service once, once. Small water systems never had them come back and do another service, all right? That didn't just happen from May 17th when they walked out the door, okay? These are progressive issues that need to be resolved. I'm not a water guy, but you know what? I'm learning a lot right now, okay? And uh, just to kind of go forward too, um, there's been talk that the um, Route 44 development is interested in taking over the plant. They're not interested in taking over the plant. All right, because their project is not going to have enough water to support that plant to keep it up and running. All right, so I mean, the town's going to have to pay for this because we have to provide water to them. The world's not going to do it. So we really need to look at those. And we need to have people that have skin in the game number one, and we need to have people that um, have a history uh, in it. And I think the two other people that we voted for, Dan and I, uh, should be the people, so. Okay. Any other comments? Um, well, my two cents is I think that um, who's developing coming on board, um, there is a serious amount of dedication, which I don't doubt. I think with um, the other possible candidates as well, uh, they'll give 110%, um, um, no doubt. Uh, they have best interest as well. Interest as well. Uh, I too am concerned about um, not having someone with the experience. I sensed, and I could be wrong, frustration from Mr. Mueller that um, funding was part of the problem, that there was never enough. A volunteer commission, um, I, I heard a couple times now that a superintendent is needed, which is, you know, there's capital dollars to be looked at, and there's there's operational dollars to be looked at, and yeah, I mean, uh, it's something that it's going to be something that really needs to be looked at hard. 
but I think that with Mr. Belkin's dedication and uh, Mr. Mueller's background, I think that would that would help. So we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any other questions? So how are we going to do this? Are we going to we have to pick two people out of the five, correct? Yep. So we do. So two people get nominated first. Those are the two, or to be. I believe that's what how we have. Sorry, because I missed the last week, so I wasn't yep. sure how. To... Sorry, so I'm back. So are you are you looking for two nominations at this point? No, no. Just to do in each one. In so we're going to vote on Mr. Mueller, yep. and then we're going to go to a second. Nominee. A second. Okay. I move that we appoint Douglas Fix. But we have uh, we, so on the one. we have a motion on the table. Let's handle the first one first. Yeah. So we have a vote on Mr. So Mueller. Mr. Mueller. We have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Now we have a second position on. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we appoint Kim Shea. We have a motion to appoint Kim Shea. Do we have a second? I'll second that. that we have a second. Um, any other questions, issues, or concerns by the board? I just want to make a comment. I, I agree with what John, what you had said before. We, we have Mr. Belvin's dedication, Mr. Mueller's background, and I think it's important to have someone in that area as well. Um, and that's why I support Kim Shea. Okay. Any other comments? I move that we appoint Douglas Fix. Oh, we have a motion. We have, we have to this motion first. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor of appointing Kim Shea, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Okay. Um, would anyone like to make a motion for the second commissioner? Douglas Fix. Yeah, Douglas Fix is a motion. We have a second. Second. Um, any questions, issues, or concerns? No, I, would just, I would just make the same comment I made earlier. I think the experience that Mr. Fix has. Oh is just going to be valuable out there as we work to go forward, whether it's North Tower, Middleborough, or some combination. I just think there's no substitute for experience. Okay. Well, I have some. <laughs> um, so I, as you see people, um, there's clearly going to be three votes for him, um, maybe four. Uh, so you're getting the same old, same old for what's going on. Um, not too happy, like I said. Um, I, I don't think that the dedication was there in the first place for either one of these. So, um, and it looks like you just want to go back and, um, yeah, you want to go back and appoint these two guys, and and hopefully I'll resign and you guys can have your way. So, this is going to cost a lot of money to get this plant up and running because we have DEP wants it up and running. Period, cut and dry. We're going to need water for North Cabo. It's going to cost money. All right. So, no matter how you look at this, it's going to cost money. It's going to cost taxpayers. It's never going to make money unless we do something to make the plant better. Okay. And I think the only way we can make it better is to scrap it and start with a new green sand system. It's going to cost a lot of money, but it will be compatible with Middleborough, and we can possibly reach out to them and, and do a, a district between them and also reach out to Plimpton. Because if we have a system that's compatible, it's more valuable, okay? But right now, yeah, I, I don't think we we need the same old, same old. We need something else. Okay. Just, just a couple of comments. I, I understand Mr. Belvin's thoughts. I do think we have budget challenges with the North Carver Water District, and that's something we may have to look at at some point going future, in the future. But my priority, and I think this board's priority, but I know I can only speak for myself, is that we have people in North Carver that are counting on us and, and the North Carver Water District to provide them good, clean water. And I think the best way to do that is to have people on the North Carver Water District that have experience with water plants. And I, I appreciate Mr. Belvin stepping forward, and I appreciate everything he's, he's done so far, but I just think that it's important to have people with experience on that board. 
I just wanted to make that safe. Okay, any, any other comments? Um, I would just like to say how this vote goes that I, I hope you, you stay on the board. I think that um, uh, having operators and um, uh, that have experience might might be advantageous. Um, and I think you generally drive things home, get thing, get get projects done. So, uh, yeah, I hope you stay on the board. Mr. Chairman, I agree with that. All right. One, one no, sorry. Yeah. sorry. This, you know, obviously, this is a big decision, and, and I kind of I agree with Mr. Belvin and with Mr. Townsend as far as uh, get some new blood as well. But you also need some experience. Um, Mr. Mueller has a has a good background, and what impressed me most was the financial with the the facts, facts and figures that can help Mr. Belvin come up to speed. And I hope that uh, uh, Kim Shea was on there just for another voice. Um, we do, we, do, we do need to blend this, um, this commission up, in my opinion. Because um, it's, it's important, there's going to be a lot of tough decisions coming up. I, I think it has been neglected in the past, and I think now it's under this spotlight, and more people are going to be looking at this as well as they should. So uh, I also hope you stay on if the vote doesn't go your way. Um, because, you know, we, just, we need to. We need to turn this thing around. It's not going to be overnight, but we need to start the process. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. Um, all those in favor of appointing um, Mr. Fix to the uh, as a commissioner to North Carolina Water District, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Okay. Three, two. All right. Um, thank you very much for everyone for, for showing up. Uh, next item on the agenda, uh, town manager to update. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> um, just so the board is aware, uh, DPW has been down to the COA. Uh, they've been doing some uh, work down there, uh, particularly trimming some of the brush along the road down to the beach, um, creating more parking there, and then creating some parking spaces behind the building. Um, to reclaim asphalt, particularly uh, parking for staff, which frees up parking spaces um, for for the users there. So, um, you know, hopefully looking for some more parking there. And the COA is always challenged with that. Uh, another thing that's happening there, um, the pickleball bid opening was today. Uh, we are moving forward with that project, so there'll be another improvement coming down to the uh, COA area there. Um, our office. Uh, Excuse me. Oh, do we have a timetable on when the pickleball might be? Right, uh, everyone keeps asking all the time, so pickleball's hot right now. I believe they are trying to be in line to break ground in August, so sometime breaking ground okay. this summer. So, so, so probably a fish, probably next spring, as you can see. I, I, the way pickleball goes, why we play into the winter? Okay. Honestly, really? they, they, it is quite popular. Um, so I, I know Lane's worked on this too. Um, our office has been working with Meyer on um, insurance credits. Uh, this is training for our staff. It's kind of a win-win situation. Our staff, our staff gets safety training. Um, Maya sees that as a way that we reduce liability for the insurance thing. Um, comes in a, a 20, about $20,000 credit for our insurance bill. So it's a good thing. Again, it's training for our staff, safety training, you know, chainsaw training, uh, truck training, plowing training, uh, things of this nature. And again, Maya gives us the credit for that. So it's a good thing for our staff to be doing. And then the only thing I think I want to re remind you of is I know next week on, no, next week? The week after, I'm sorry. We'll be uh, town administrator and select board goals. I know you're all working on those, so I'll be my first opportunity. I think we have a July 2nd deadline for submitting. So, yeah. so that, that's all I have. Jim? Thank you. Um, any select board announcements? Uh, yeah, I would just, um, I don't know when this is going to be aired. I know we're not live, but I would remind everybody about the town townwide yard sale on the, on the 29th. And I'd just like to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Students? I have no um, Again, uh, echo Mr. Town's thoughts. I wish everyone a happy 4th of July. Uh, safe one as well. Uh, I missed a I well, wish everyone a happy 4th of July as well. And also, the Carver Crusader Athletic Boosters are having a golf tournament on July 20th at um, Squirrel Run. And we still have a few openings for our golfers as well as whole sponsors. So if you'd like to participate, please let me know. Thank you.
All right. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone, and good night. Good night.